Happy Movember! This lesson in IB quantum slash nuclear physics is going to be all about spectrometry. And we're going to talk about how those spectral lines, how they show that the energy is quantized in an atom. And we're going to talk about how you can think of these atomic energy levels as a sort of electron in a box model. Here are some atomic spectra. These guys here are emission spectra. And down below here are the missing lines. Those are absorption spectra. And as far as the lab procedure, we've already done that. Where have you been? If you look back at uh, video one in topic seven, the standard level atomic physics, look towards the end of that video, then we go through the lab procedure. Whenever scientists looked at atomic spectra, which was a pretty hip thing to do in the 1800s, they saw that if this was on our x-axis here, let's say that these would be different wavelengths, they always, for hydrogen, saw energy given off at this wavelength, and this wavelength, and this wavelength. Always. But they never saw it given off at any of these other wavelengths. Now this showed that the energy had to be quantized, because it could be here, and it could be here, but it could never be anything in between. That's what quantization is. It can be 1, it can be 2, but it can never be 1.3. Now what people started to think was, well maybe these electrons could be at certain energy levels within an atom, and they could fall in to these lower energy levels, and they could give these specific wavelengths, but they weren't allowed to fall anywhere in between. That would be disallowed. And so you got the quantization, we think, from falling to these specific levels. If you want to look at these spectral lines and their wavelengths, and then calculate some energy levels, which would be a lot of fun, it helps understand where the electrons in an atom are coming from. So let's say this is a hydrogen atom, simplest one. And this lowest level here, we're going to call the ground state. That's the lowest energy an electron can have. Now, if the electrons are falling all the way from whatever level to the ground state, that's a big deal. And that's going to be a lot of energy given off. So we call this Lyman series, and it's actually going to be in the UV. Now, if these electrons only fall to the second level, that's not as big of a deal. It's not as much energy. And that's why we call this Balmer series, um, say that's only in the visible spectrum. Now here, the electrons are falling in only to the third energy level, and that's why maybe it's not even energetic enough to be visible. Maybe it would be something like infrared. Here's a more useful diagram, although maybe a little bit more confusing than that other one, because this shows all the different energy levels, and there's heights here to show the difference in relative energy between all of them. And so you can see you've got the ground state, which is all the way down by the nucleus, and there's a big jump up to the second level, smaller jump up to the third, and then increasingly smaller ones. Now, by the time you get an infinite number of levels away from the nucleus, we say that an electron there would have an energy of zero, and it's a free electron. And then as it gets closer to the nucleus, it gets more negative energies. With down at the ground state, energy of negative 13.6. This is in electron volts. Now, if you're asked the question, as you see here, see if you are clever enough to solve it. Pause it. Do your magic. Now, what you need to notice, if that goes from ground state up to n equals 3, you want to first take the difference between 1.51 and 13.6. And that turns out to be about 12.1 electron volts. And now eventually, you're going to use this equation that you've hopefully already seen to find the energy of a photon. But first, this needs to be in joules. So you do a conversion from electron volts to joules, and one electron volt is this many joules, also the charge of an electron. Uh, and that will give you a energy of 1.9 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And then you plug that into here. And 
and you plug in Planck's constant. And then you solve for frequency. And that frequency, let me go over here, turns out to be something like 2.9 times 10 to the 15 hertz. But it wants the wavelength. So you think, no problem. I've studied waves, and I know that the speed of light times wavelength times frequency will give me the wavelength. Once you solve that, you can do that yourself. You're going to get a wavelength, hopefully, of like 1 times 10 to the negative 7th meters, or if you cleverly convert that to nanometers, that's going to be about 100 nanometers. And you ask, does that make sense with what I know about the Lyman series? Probably don't know anything about the Lyman series. But let me tell you that it's in the UV part of the spectrum. And this is too short to be in the visible, so I think it probably is within the UV part. Funny enough, these weird atomic energy levels that we were just looking at can be thought of if you think of the electron in a weird situation of being trapped in a box, which is bizarre, but bear with me here. As we said before, electrons are like waves, or you can think of them as both a particle and as a wave. And if it is a wave, let's pretend that the electron is a standing wave trapped in a box, and that the ends of the box always have to be like nodes on a standing wave. Well, this electron, in its lowest energy state, could have one half wavelength uh, oscillating back and forth here. Boing, 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 boing. And so it's like a string. If you give it a little bit more energy, maybe it could have a full wavelength with three nodes here. And then you could give it even more energy, and you could get one and a half wavelengths, as we're seeing here. Uh, and it turns out, if you use this model, you can figure out the kinetic energy of an electron using this really bizarre equation. Now what this is, L, is what we're going to call the length of the orbital circumference. So pretend that Instead of being in a box, the electron is actually going around the atom, and that's kind of like the length of our box. This m sub e, you can probably guess, is the mass of our electron. The 8, I don't know where the 8 came from. Uh, h here is Planck's constant. And this n here is our integer. And if the energy electron is in its lowest state, we would put n equals 1. So in the next highest one, n equals 2, or n equals 3, etc. 